Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV. In this video, we're going to continue the login screen. And so far, we've got a, a working login screen. So if I show you my mouse, I can tap the buttons, they work, we can tap on here and interact with the app. And what I want to show you is how to fix the layout when we rotate. So if I use the hardware and then rotate left or right, or I can use these hotkeys right here to do it. You'll notice that the app doesn't doesn't stretch correctly and doesn't fill correctly. And so we're going to take a look at how we can make it so that it either fits that or how to set some of the the supported orientations for the the iPhone app. So in this situation, you may want to limit just to the portrait screen. So maybe you don't want it to rotate. And that's what some of the popular apps like Facebook have done. And you could go that route because it will make your app a little bit simpler to get started. So let's take a look at our user interface file. I'm going to try and drag this over so it's centered more. And if I pop out that bar, it's going to move around a little bit. All right, so we've got our interface here. Now remember, these buttons don't draw correctly in Interface Builder for some reason, but they do when we actually run the app. So don't worry about the stretching on the corners. Now what we want to do is we want to sort of just create a relative interface and, and have things connected. So I want to build the interface from the bottom up. So I want the new user button to be 40 points away from the bottom of the screen on any iPhone device. And then I'm going to build all the way up and sort of use that relation. So the first thing we need to do is we need to start using auto layout to establish some relationships between where the user interface elements are going to be. And there's a few different ways we can add things. I can right click on something and I can drag and this will give me a context sensitive set of options for selecting different things. So here I could center this button and I could say, okay, I always want this button to be centered so that when we rotate it into a, a landscape, it would stay centered there as well. Now we're going to be way off the screen on a landscape. So it's going to squish everything if we try to do landscape. So we're going to skip landscape for this app, but I'm going to show you how these different things will will work and we will get to making them all connected. So the other thing we can do is we can use the document outline here to also add more connections. So we'll get more options if we drag from our view here to our parent view, which is this one. Now, because I have this background image right here, when I try to connect to the view, it's actually going to give me options for connecting to the background image, which might be what I want or it might not be what I want. So Depending on how you want to lay this stuff out, you might want to drag from the button directly to the view if you're trying to do some of the relationships that we have here. So that's how I'm going to get started is I'm going to drag to the view. All right, so there's certain attributes that we're going to want here. And the first thing we're going to want is this bottom space. So I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can select multiple. And you can see a little check mark appears here because I have this shift key down. So that's this little message down here. And the other thing I want is I want to probably center it horizontally in the container. So that's going to give us that center layout that we're looking for. And so we can click off and we now see that we have a relationship that is set for our button. Now you'll notice if you look closely here, there are some dash marks here and we're having an issue where the size of the button conflicts with what we have here. So the default size of a button, now let's see what happens when we run it. The default size of a button is going to be smaller. And we can see that it's hugging where I wanted it, but it's going to resize. So we'll have to also specify the size. And since we're going with a custom width, we need to specify that that width is going to be custom. And we want the button to be this big. Now there is a default height for the button and we are using it. So I do not need to be explicit with that and we can just run with these options. So now you see the button is down here along the bottom of the screen, and we're going to build up and bring everything so that it is coming down to the bottom. Next up, we will do a, a drag between these two options, and this will give us a vertical spacing attribute, which allows us to have the, the distance to be the same. So if we were to rerun this, you can do this one step at a time just to sort of see how things work. Now, we haven't expressed all the relationships, so we never set a, a height here. And so that's why this button is stretching right now. But we're not finished yet, so 
let's see if we can set the width on this one. And then I'm going to want to center this to this one. So I'm going to drag down again, and I'm going to do center x. And now we are going to establish a relationship between this and the password field. So I want the vertical spacing here. So what we have right now, if we stop and rerun, looks like this. So we're still stretching one of our buttons, and it's not quite what we want, but we're, we're not finished. So I'm going to keep on adding some of our, our items here. So this needs a custom width since I've resized it from its default. So we'll choose this width. And then it needs to know where it's positioned. And I want it to be based on the center X of the login button. So I'm going to do center X. And it's actually going to give me this offset from the center. So you can see it's on the center right here. And the center of our text field is right here. So it's giving me this offset. And I should be able to click on it if I am careful. And we'll see some options here. So it's 42 pixels off center. And that is going to establish that relationship. Next up, I want to drag to our next item and do the vertical spacing here. So we've established our, our layout relationships in this vertical direction for these guys. This one we can see needs a, a width because it's not wide enough based on the dash marks we see here. So now we've got that fixed. And now we'll come up to our image, which we want, again, to be the vertical spacing away. And then we're going to want the center X here. So it's going to, to keep that relationship to the center with our, our image view up here. And now our image needs to be expressed in both a width and height. So if I drag diagonally, we can hold the shift key and do both the width and the height. And that will give us information, but we're not describing all the information it needs to, to lay this out. So I also want to establish the, the spacing to our no, actually, I want this to be in the center. So what I'm going to do is we didn't establish the, the center X here. So I'll put that here, and that fixes our issue. So now everything is sort of centered along here, and it's just working its way up. So it, this is all relative, and now if we run it, hopefully we'll see something that we expect. All right, so it looks like our layout is good along the bottom. Our, our background hasn't been set, and our, our text fields have not been, or our labels have not been set. So I'm going to establish a, a spacing relationship here. So it's going to be this distance right here. So I'll establish the horizontal spacing. And then I need to establish some kind of a vertical alignment. And so I can drag it right back here and say I want the center Y. And so that will establish that it's going to be in line with this. And we'll do the same exact thing with the password field. We'll do the horizontal spacing. And then if I do that again, I want the center Y. So now that is described, and we can double check to make sure this is working. And we see those are lining up. So our last thing to fix is our image background view. And we will click on this. And once this is selected, I can drag from here to the view. Or instead of doing that, we could also click here and drag from here to the view. Now, for this one, we want it to be pinned to the top of the device, the left of the device, the bottom of the device, and the right of the device. So leading space is going to be our left side. Trailing space is going to be our right side. So you can imagine leading and trailing. And then we're going to want top space and bottom space. So top space is up here and bottom space is down here. So this is going to make our image stretch and we shouldn't have any more of those white bars along the bottom. So I will click off of this. We'll stop it, and we will rerun and see what happens. All right, so now our iPhone app has been laid out. And just a, a quick test, we could see if this will work when we rotate. So I'll go to Hardware and Rotate Right. And we see how everything is sort of pinned from the bottom. So this is what we expected. And our image just sort of goes off screen because we have not told it that we want it to squish or anything. We've told it that we wanted to build the user interface from the bottom up because the important information that we have here are these fields. So this is just one way to create the layout. And I can rotate with the keyboard shortcuts back to our portrait layout. Now, if you wanted to 
limit the, the rotations, we could do that, and I'll show you that in another video using a little bit of code. And then the other thing that we have here that I want to show you in another video is how to get our status bar so that it is no longer dark because our background is dark and we want a light status bar. So, all right, so we'll check that out in the next video.